Because they're beautiful people, I'm Celestine of Ghana Christian International High School. I'll encourage you guys to subscribe to this course. Thank you. Bye bye. Hello there. You are welcome to Ahiscope TV. Um, I would like to remind you to subscribe. Please subscribe to the channel. Um, if you have not subscribed, in case you have subscribed to, we thank you for your support. So today we are going to look at the disadvantages or limitations in the indirect rule policy. Um, in our previous um, lesson, or video we looked at the advantages uh, or the benefit of the indirect rule system that was introduced in the Gold Coast um, by the British and so today we are going to look at the 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 disadvantages okay or the limitations in the indirect rule system um, there is a saying that in everything there is both an advantage and of course um, disadvantages so in case you have not watched the video uh, on last week's um, um, the video on the advantages or the previous lesson video I have added a link in the description uh, under this video so check in the description and then uh, I've titled it RPK the relevant previous knowledge please um, click on it to watch the advantages or the benefit of the indirect rule system and that was the um, a lesson uh, before this one so that you can understand the issues um, which are going to be raised over in here so quickly we will not waste much time since this is a continuation of a lesson that we have already done so let's begin with the objectives for today so simple the objectives for today um, is for us to be able to um, discuss um, the advantage the disadvantages okay uh, or the or the limitations of the indirect rule um, which was introduced in the gold coast so it could be an essay question to outline or discuss or examine any four or three um, limitations or disadvantages of the indirect rule system and uh, it is my hope that by, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to do that for anybody who asks you that question. So let's begin with the first um, disadvantage. Okay, so the first disadvantage or limitations of the indirect rule policy was that the indirect rule policy um, brought about division. Okay. So the policy brought about divisions and these divisions were between the educated elite okay the divisions were between the educated elite and the um, chiefs or the traditional rulers okay the educated elite and the traditional um, rulers so it brought about division among these two people and basically it was because under the indirect rule system um, the traditional rulers okay they came to recognize the sorry the British came to recognize the traditional rulers as the holders of political authority and to the complete exclusion of the educated elite so you, you recall in our um, 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 discussions on the constitutional development in the then Gold Coast, we saw that the educated elite uh, constantly um, um, complain about they being um, neglected from colonial administration. So under the indirect rule system, we have also established that the British used the local chiefs or the traditional um, rulers to rule the people. So the, the indirect rule came to um, 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 recognize the hold the, the traditional um, leaders as the holders of political power and then they alienated the educated elite which was one of the reasons why the educated elite um, decided not to um, um, support the indirect rule of system so this whole thing brought about um, um, conflict okay b between the 
two parties, the traditional rulers on one side and the educated elite on the other. Each of these group of people aspiring to lead the people. And you, you also recall that Castle Hayford said that by their education, they were the ones who were supposed to represent the people. And the chiefs also said that no, since time immemorial, they have been the people's representative. So this whole thing brought about division and the British coming in to recognize the kings or the traditional leaders even made matters worse. Okay, and so you realize that in the educated elite later spearheaded of or fought against the native authority system and also the entire British colonial rule. So they were fighting for independence to do away with the entire British colonial rule and again to take the chiefs away from politics because they felt that by their education chiefs were not supposed to be in politics okay or to take part in politics unless they were probably voted for good so that is the first disadvantage or limitations of the indirect rule system it brought about complete division between the chiefs and the local people as to who or which of these people um, should rule the people or should lead the people good so let's go in there and continue looking at more of the issues so another division uh, and another disadvantage or limitations of the indirect rule system um, again was that it brought about mistrust and loss of confidence okay it brought about mistrust and loss of confidence in the traditional rulers. People began, or the public began to mistrust the, the, the traditional um, leaders. Okay, basically because what happened was that some of these traditional leaders were appointed by the British. You recall we said something about Warren chiefs. And the Warren chiefs were appointed by the British in areas where there was no chief okay and so once some of these um, um um rulers were appointed by the governor or colonial governor it therefore means that the colonial governor could approve the instrument okay and also the instrument of what of chiefs so the colonial um, um governor could install and distill the chiefs so in this way what happened was that the governors then decided to reject qualified and radical what, nominees as chiefs. And they approved of persons who would act in the interest of the British. Okay, so in areas where they felt that there was no chief, they appoint people who were soft, who were lenient, who would obey anything that the British tells the king to go and do. You understand? And so they rejected the radical and even sometimes the qualified people, chiefs who could lead the people. They did not take them because they didn't want any trouble. And this explains the reason why even um, after independence, some of the leaders that came into power, like Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, who was seen as radical, uh, was not so much adored or liked by the British, but they liked people like J.B. Dankwa and then um, K. Uh, K. Buzia and Co. because they were always in line with the British, you know, always, um, 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 I mean, accepting whatever, I mean, is being told them by either the Queen or any, any other person. So the, the leaders that were there, were seen as stooges, okay, uh, the chiefs that were employed by the by the British or appointed by the British were seen um, as stooges by the people. The people felt that these chiefs, I mean, they are not in our favor. They are not, they don't rule in our interest, okay. They are ruling in the interest of the British. And therefore, that brought about the loss of confidence and also mistrust and don't also forget don't also forget that these chiefs own their appointment 
to the British. They don't own their appointment to the people. They, it, it is not the people who chose them. Even areas where the people have chosen them, if they misruled, and the misruled here means that if they do not go according to what the British wants them to do, they will be taken out. Kwejuri Agri, King Agri of Cape Coast was taken out. Nana Prempe was taken out. So, the some traditional leaders also feared that they could be taken out, and therefore, they also, you know, you know, did not rule in the interest of the people. And you cannot be a king and not rule in the interest of your people. And that is something that is 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 really a war in Africa today. Most of our leaders do not rule in our interest. Most of our presidents do not rule in our interest. You know, going for the loans, going for the aid, you know that um, these conditions there will not favor your people, would bring about unemployment, would increase the the hardship on people. But you, you, you see that these leaders go in there and they sign a deal, you know, they're only thinking about the money that will come in that instance, but they don't think about how that is going to affect the larger population because their parents, I mean, their family members are not going to be affected. So they don't care. They sign the deal. And then the populace, the, the ordinary Ghanaian, the ordinary person on the street is the one who is going to bear that consequences. Our politicians know these consequences, but they don't care. So that is what happened here with the chiefs. The people felt that they were not ruling in line with it, in their interest. So they decided to do away with them. Good. So let's take a look at the next disadvantage um, in the um, next um, disadvantage of indirect rule system. Now again, it also brought about corrupt um, practices of some of the chiefs. So some of the chiefs also became corrupt because of the indirect rule system. Now what happened was that you, you recall we said in, in our previous um, lessons that the chiefs were, were were allowed to establish a native treasury whereby after the collection of the taxes some were taken or given to the central government as the colonial governor whilst others were kept in the native treasury for works like uh, social amenities maybe hospitals roads and stuff like that now because the chiefs were not paid under the indirect rule system what then happened was that the tax that were paid into the native treasury most of the funds collected were used for other things. The chiefs, in some instances, failed to account for them. Okay, And then also, they used the money for themselves without using it for the social, for the social and economic what, uh, development what, project. So you recall that some of them, they, they, did not, they did not or they were not even paid. They, they received little compensation. So if you will not pay me, and then I have money, which tax, which I have, I have gotten from the people, then certainly I should use the tax for myself instead of using it to do what I'm supposed to use it for, for the social and economic um, projects. And so it, it led to, you know, some chiefs or traditional um, leaders being corrupt uh, because the money that were kept in the, in the, in the native treasury was not used for the the necessary um, purpose. Now the next one too was that it brought about autocratic tendencies. Okay, autocratic um, tendencies on the part of the of the chiefs. Some of these chiefs became autocratic and they ruled what cruelly. Okay, and even some chiefs continued to wield power because they had the support of the British. The subject that regarded the chiefs as traitors that they sided with the British and refused to defend the people against colonial injustice. So you see that the British had no issue with any chief so far as you you were obeying their their rules or their commandments. They had no issue with you. So when the chiefs, some of the chiefs came to know that they had a support from the British. Some of them decided to be autocratic. And we all know that from our discussion in Form 2, we know that an African chief was not supposed to be autocratic. Okay? And so you should be democratic. You should take the views of your people into consideration. 
But then what is happening here is that these chiefs, because they think they have the backing of the British, tended to be autocratic, which was against our traditional concept of uh, kinship. And so, you know, that also became a limitation or a disadvantage in the indirect policy um, in the Gold Coast. Good, 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 good. Let's take a look at the last one and then we'll bring our um, discussion today to an end. The last one or the last disadvantage of the indirect rule policy was that the system was undemocratic because uh, the British could appoint um, 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 warrant chiefs and also artificial um, rulers in communities where there were no recognized traditional uh, rulers. And some of these warrant chiefs, as I said, became autocratic and quite unpopular among the people because they were appointed by the British and so they did not see the reason why they should you know they they could do anything that they want provided it was in the interest of the British and nobody could actually um take them out except um the British. So undemocratic in the sense that some of them were even appointed to the executive and the legislative council. Okay. Um somewhere in the nineteen twenty five constitution of course nineteen um forty six um, constitution all these constitution provided seats for these chiefs mainly because of the i'm sorry mainly because of the indirect rule policy you understand and so then um uh the educated elite was were against this uh um and policy and they said it was quite undemocratic it did not follow the principles of democracy and so uh, that could also be uh, said to be a limitation of the indirect rule system. Good. So um, thank you for your time. And uh, please um, subscribe to the channel. Uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel and also share to your... If you have any topic you may want us to look at, you can you can type it in the comment section.